you do know that you're probably not going to get your deposit money back. And my heart just sank. Wow, I'm gonna lose $1,000? Yo, to be honest, I was heartbroken. Like, I I wanted to cry. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Francois, your favorite American expat living in Seoul, South Korea. Last week, I was looking for a new apartment and I ran into so many difficulties that I hope I can share my experiences with you to help prevent you from making the same mistakes that I made. Let's go. So I've been living in the same apartment for about five years. The only downside about the apartment is that it's in the basement. The lack of sunlight is starting to take its toll on my physical and mental health. To look for a new apartment, I enlisted the help of one of my close friends here in Korea. Her name is Hina. I had Hina on a mission to scour the city looking for the perfect apartment that fit the specs that I gave her. She actually did a really good job. She found some apartments, but the downside about living in Korea is that this culture is bali bali. It's really, really fast. So whenever she found the apartments, they would be gone in about an hour or so. Hina tells me, Francois, look, if you want the apartment, you gotta go, go, go. In my mind, I've already got it planned that, okay, if I find an apartment that I really, really like, I need to go and make a promise that I'm gonna get that apartment because I'm scared that the apartments are gonna get sold out or they're gonna be gone by the time I actually get to the place. Pina hooks me up with this real estate agent. The agent shows me some apartments. I don't really like them. And then he says, Francois, there is an apartment in the same area where you're living now. Actually, the apartment is just right across the street. So you can stay in the same area. We look at the apartment and I really like the apartment. It's on the top floor. There's tons of sunlight. Only complaint I had about this apartment is the price. I'm currently paying or I was paying 450, the equivalent of 450 US dollars for my apartment in the semi basement. The new apartment will cost the equivalent of 800 US dollars. So that's a pretty big uptick. I was extremely impressed with the apartment. And after some haggling, I decided that I was going to move into the place. In Korea, the way the real estate agency works for renting apartments is there's a chanze and there's also key money. The amount of key money that you put down can affect your rent. I was looking for an apartment with 30 million won. That's like $30,000 or something like that. With 30 million won, I could get an apartment that has rent for about 600 US dollars, the equivalent of 600 US dollars. This apartment, I couldn't put that much money on it. I could only put about 20 million. I decided to put 20 million on the apartment. I had to haggle my way from 850 US dollars for the rent to 800 US dollars. I'm satisfied with the apartment. So we go back to the real estate agent. The real estate agent is you know, doing his checking or whatever. I call my landlord to make sure that I can move. He says that it is okay. And I call a couple of other friends to check the offer to make sure like I wasn't getting ripped off or something like that. In Korea, sometimes real estate agencies or landlords can increase rent just because you're a foreigner. Once I found out that I could move, I still had a little queasy feeling in my stomach about the whole uh, experience, but I was like, okay, it's time for me to move. I can't be afraid to go in a new direction. Yeah, I'm gonna get the apartment. In order for me to put that apartment on hold, I had to give a promissory deposit. I needed to put down 1 million won, so almost $1,000 for the deposit. I did that, but when I went home, Home, my landlord, the current landlord, called me and he says, Francois, are you moving into this building on this floor in this apartment? And I said, yeah, how did you know? Long story short, my landlord tells me that you don't need to move into that apartment. We have an apartment that is about the same size. He takes me to the apartment. I love it. And I'm like, oh man, I should have checked again just to make sure that there is an apartment available. We negotiate the price. He says, Francois, you do know that you're probably not going to get your deposit money back. And my heart just sank. Wow. I'm going to lose $1,000. Yo, to be honest, I was heartbroken. Like I, I wanted to cry because I mean, it's $1,000. It's $1,000 that I can't spend on something that I need to spend it on. Losing $1,000 is not going to hurt me. I'm going to be okay. However, it's still $1,000. Now I want to share with you some things that I should have done uh, before going to look for the apartment on my own. The one thing that you should always do, or I should have done, I should have taken a Korean person with me when I was looking for an apartment. You know, please, please come with me to look for an apartment. You know, take some time out of your day to help me because I could have had the benefit of her being able to understand exactly what the real estate agent was saying and translating perfectly to me so I could have made a better decision. Make sure that I check all of my options. Yes, it's true that in Korea, 
things move very quickly. And yes, I did lose out on the other apartments that I wanted to get. However, there's always another opportunity. Even if there isn't another opportunity, I should have waited and made sure that I was absolutely sure that I wanted to get that apartment before sending the money. Actually, the mistake is not on the real estate agent. I should not have any ill will toward anyone else but myself because I'm the one who made the mistake. I'm the one who didn't research. I didn't exhaust all of my options before I transferred that large sum of money. To be honest, all of the onus is on me. Another tip I should have taken into consideration is to not let the salesperson pressure me into making a choice right then and there. It's the salesperson's job to sell a product to me. The Korean real estate agent was speaking very, very quickly and he was pushing the paper in my face and saying, hey, you need to go ahead and sign. There's probably not going to be another apartment with the specifications that you want. If you want this apartment, you better go ahead and get it now. So he just kept pushing me and pushing me and pushing me. I could feel like that anxiety coming over me. I let the salesperson kind of push me into making the choice when I should have just you know, ignored him, trusted my gut and waited until I exhausted all of my options. Another mistake I made, damn, I'm so stupid. <sighs> My current apartment includes internet and cable TV. The air conditioner is also free. The apartment that I wanted to move into, I had to buy my own internet. I had to pay for the cable and the air conditioner would not have been free. I made a very, very dumb mistake of not making sure that that apartment checked all of the specifications that I wanted. The last thing I should have done, this is actually one thing that I love about Korea. You can negotiate your deposit money and your rent. So earlier in the video, I talked to you about the key money deposit and the chanse and the wolse. The key money is how much money you can put as a deposit on the apartment. Depending on the amount of money you put down on the apartment, your rent can fluctuate. It can go up or it can go down. So if I put 20 million won on an apartment and my rent is 800,000 won a month. Let's say if I add another five or 10 million won, my rent can go down another 50,000 won. Instead of paying 800,000 a month, I could pay 750,000. Fortunately for me, this story has a silver lining. My landlord is incredible. My landlord, he knows my would-be landlord. He was able to negotiate me receiving 500,000 won back or $500 back. Unfortunately, I could not get all of the money back. However, I'll just have to chalk that up to a learning experience. And also it can be a learning experience for you as well. Don't make the same mistake that I made. Make sure that you maybe follow the tips that I mentioned uh, earlier in this video to prevent you from having to <laughs> lose vast sums of money. Also, my landlord told me that in Korea, a lot of these situations are happening not only to foreigners, but to Koreans as well. Koreans are putting down deposit money, then for whatever the reason, they have to change their mind or something happens, the landlord will not return the money back. That's it for me today. I don't wanna take all of your time. Uh, it's cold out here, but I think I'm gonna go take some photos and look for some dinner. And actually, I'm also going to find a way to make my 500,000 won back, maybe do a photography job or a video job or something, but I'm not gonna rest. That money will be recuperated. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching this video. Thanks for listening to me rant about my my problem. Hope that you took some value from this video. Thanks for watching. Love you all. Hope you have a wonderful day, weekend, uh, whenever it is that you're watching this. And make sure you're eating right, you're drinking enough water, make sure you're staying hydrated, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Love you. Peace. Bye.